Hey guys, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of the Sentry X2 by Adventure Force, or Dart Zone, more like. It has the primetime slash uh, Dart Zone thing on it. So I'm assuming it's Dart Zone, even though it says Adventure Force. This is a Walmart uh, blaster that I got. Picked it up for like $9.84 or something. And I was really intrigued by it because I looked at it and I was right next to a Kronos and it was much cheaper, about half as much as a stock Kronos was. And it should be a nice alternative to those who want a Kronos. Basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this open, taking this out of the box, showing you guys how it performs, giving a little overview and review out of the box. And then we're also gonna be comparing it to a stock Kronos made by Hasbro and then also a modified Kronos. Just to compare, uh, we're not gonna be modifying this one in the video, we're just gonna be mostly talking about mod potential wise because I had this thing for a couple hours, so I fiddled around with it and looked at the internals and whatnot just to look at the mining potential wise to compare it to the two. And yeah, so out of the box, you get the Sentry X2. I don't know if a Sentry X1. So I don't know. I Googled it and I didn't find one. So unless my, my Google foo is bad, I didn't notice one. But then it also comes with the six Adventure Force rounds, which are compatible with rival rounds. So. Too lazy to get them out of the box for just when we use the rival. Uh, it says on the box that this blaster is compatible with all Hasbro type ammo, and I've tested it and it works well with them, so it is cross compatible fully with the genuine Hasbro ammo and probably also compatible with all the third party rival ammo that's out there, such as a headshot or cornucopia rounds and whatnot. But basically, this is going to be a standard six shot uh, rival pistol. On the box, it says it holds six. I found that from playing with it, it'll actually hold seven in the internal magazine and then also one in the chamber. So a total of eight rounds. I think that's really nice. Five in a Kronos works well enough, but honestly for running a blaster, I would personally like to have more than five shots, especially with how the Kronos loading mechanism works. Uh, honestly, playing with this, I much prefer a stock. If we're talking purely stock, if I were to compare the two stock blasters against each other, I'm gonna give it to the Sentry, hands down. For one, it's cheaper, it gets very similar performance from my testing to a stock Kronos, which is nice, and also I love the loading mechanism on this thing much better. To load it, all you have to do is you push this little button forward, you open this little hatch, the hatch has a retention mechanism in the close and open position, so even if you tilt it around like that, it's not gonna close, and then all you have to do is you take a rattle around and you push it down into the little slot. Like I've said, it'll hold seven, up top you can squeeze an eighth one in there but I found from my testing when you do that when you overload it with an eighth one you tend to have a couple issues with the jamming now another cool thing I like about this blaster is I've loaded all those rounds with the breech still closed and I don't have to actually close this door in order to load and fire a rival round which I think is amazing I'm a big fan of internal magazines that you can load whilst having the breech closed. So being able to have a round ready to fire and loaded and still being able to reload whilst having this in case someone rushes is really nice. It's one thing I do with my Kronos a lot of times where I'll load a, load a round in the chamber and then I'll take the magazine out and reload it. Now, yeah, not using the top loading functionality of a Kronos correctly isn't really that great, but I'd much rather prefer this where I can have a round loaded up, ready to fire, and be top loading it. So yeah, so yeah. Basically this thing is pulled out. Yeah. The 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 magazine area is actually above the top. It'll hold it'll hold seven. You can squeeze an eight one in there but it gets a little bit of that. No, it's probably up here. What's the rep? That's a trigger safety. So yeah. Uh, compared to a stock Kronos, the safety on these sentries is this lower button right here. So when you grab the blaster, you just put your finger over that and hold it tight, and then you're able to pull the trigger. If you don't have your hand around the grip, it won't fire. Whereas on a standard Kronos, it has more of a standard safety with an up-down switch. Now, personally, I don't really like this safety switch on the Kronos because I really like holding my thumb on top of there, and that's how I could lock in the pistols and whatnot, and I really like that. It's from like other safeties on other like airsoft guns and whatnot but i hold it in the down position a lot and so there will be times where i've been using my chronos and i'll and i'll be using it during a round and my thumb will just naturally rest onto there and hold it down and then i can't actually pull the trigger it's ready to fire in the up position 
which doesn't really feel comfortable for me, which is why on my Kronos, I have removed the safety. But this one's also very nice. When you open up the blaster, you can take out all the components and then it'll just flop around normally if you put it in. Uh, you can take out this whole switch altogether, but then it leaves the opening in the shell, which I didn't like, and so I put it back in just so that it'll just flop around, but when I'm holding it, there's no rattle. Um, but yeah, so like I've said, the magazine is above the plunder tube, so you may have some issues with that. It's a little bit of a tall blaster comparing it. If I put the triggers together on the Kronos, it's a little bit taller I'm trying to line them up so yeah it's a bit taller because on the chronos the magazine comes underneath the barrel or else the barrel is here and the magazine is up here uh, but another thing that i think is really great about this blaster is this piece will come right off <laughs> you broke it nope uh it it comes off these two pieces flex out they have grooves that you can slide back on that's probably how they put it on at the factory but it just comes off and in order to take apart the blaster there's a screw here underneath where this slides on so you have to take this off already and honestly i don't think it looks that bad without it and it i really like it because then it's always open and ready to load up and you can just load in the sights are clear you don't have this always open but yeah uh, that's another thing with my chronos and a lot of people do with chronos is they cut out this door or they remove it entirely. Whereas right now, it it's very easy to just literally pop off. It takes no modifying whatsoever. I literally just like grabbed it earlier one day and when I was popping it open, I just popped it too far forward <laughs> and it came off. Now initially I thought I broke it, but after looking at it, I was like, oh, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, there's a little tab on these circle things which key in to the slots here so that it locks into closed or open and won't flop around a ton, but yeah. I really like this thing. In stock form, it's decently powerful. I I would say that's relatively close to a stock Kronos. Stand there again for me. This one doesn't have the air. Oh, that is another thing I should mention. The so for those of you who know how the Kronos air restrictor works it's honestly not really that much of an air restrictor like <laughs> like we agree the air restrictor on the chronos doesn't really restrict the air that much yeah uh i personally leave them in when i modify chronoses because they don't removing them doesn't uh restrict the air any less and it honestly helps with the feeding and whatnot whereas like this has the air restrictor out but even with the air restrictor in that's about how, yeah, that's about how a uh, stock chrono sounds. Well, if I can get this to, okay, I'm going to have to empty this one so I can show you guys. Okay, I lost that one, but, all right, so just to show you guys as a comparison, the air restrictor in the Sentry is actually an air restrictor. When, when you close the breech and you don't have a round loaded and you pull the trigger, <laughs> it sounds like a blaster with an air shooter because it actually does so on this you would probably actually benefit from removing the air shooter if you wanted to and so I would probably recommend actually doing that if you have if you want to if you get a sentry and you want to upgrade it uh, from my testing with it and opening it up and looking at the internals uh, it's really great the internals. they're really easy to upgrade yeah like Kronos internals easy to upgrade Sentry internals, easy if not easier to upgrade. Like, everything sits in the shell so perfectly. I love the way this magazine feeding mechanism works much more than the Kronos. It holds more, it's easier to load because you don't have to open the breech. It's, <laughs> it's really great. One thing, the loading mechanism on this will have a couple hangups sometimes because it does rely on gravity to sort of help with all right guys sorry about that camera cut out a little bit because it overheated it's summer here in idaho and it's getting fairly hot out uh, so uh, i don't really remember when it cut out so i'm just going to go over some of the stuff that i previously talked about uh to compare the internals of the century to the chronos the plunder rod on them is relatively similar they have run a very similar catch mechanism so they'll probably take mostly the same upgrade springs you can fit long truss springs onto this over 
the spring press, which I really like. Uh, another thing is the catcher's reversal, so if you use it too much and wear it down, you can flip it around and it'll still work. Uh, another also great thing is on the Kronos, the plunder rod can only go in one way like this, like this in the blaster or catch, whereas on the Sentry it's symmetrical so you can put it in both ways and it'll work. Uh, another thing that's really great is on a stock Kronos, the seal is really, like, not that great. It's pretty good, it's decent enough for a stock blaster, but it's not 100% like we would like it to be, so normally you have to go in and Teflon tape it, whereas on the Sentry, when I open this one up, I don't know about all of them, but this one already had a perfect air seal inside of it with 100%, which was really great, and I really like that, because I didn't have to fiddle with the seals at all. All I did was take it apart, take out the locks, put it in another upgrade spring, and then it was shooting hard, you know, shooting nice. The barrel is really great, I like it. It seats all the way up in the front here, so honestly I could just plug it from the front and then fire it and it would have a really nice seal. Uh, sadly, oh, well I have round loading in this one so I can't actually, can't actually do that for you, but also I probably couldn't do it because there's an air restrictor installed and the air restrictor on these is actually really great compared, well, I wouldn't say really great. It does its job really well, <laughs> which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> Good thing if you don't have a dart load, if you don't have a rival round loaded when you fire it, it's perfectly fine. There's not going to be any real force that will destroy the blaster. Bad thing is, slows down the rival rounds. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it should be an easy thing to take out just with like a drill, how we normally take air restrictors out. Uh, I don't technically take, I don't normally take the air restrictors out of a Kronos because they don't really restrict very much and they actually help with feeding, whereas on this, uh, it doesn't really need it. The feeding mechanism will work without it. and it will actually restrict it. So I would probably recommend taking out the air restrictor when you want to mod these fly these things and you put an upgrade spring. If you take out the air restrictor and put an upgrade spring in this, you could probably have a really great performance. Uh, the sad thing about this though is from my experience when I upgrade the spring inside of it, it really it got powerful, which was nice. I didn't even take out the air restrictor and it still got relatively powerful. So I like that. The thing that I don't like is the hop up on this thing. Uh, now, with a Kronos hop-up, this is my modified Kronos. You can see I've actually, like, tuned this one and cut it down a little bit, as you, as Chris Tea talked about in some of his videos. So this Kronos that I have is upgraded, and it fires incredibly straight. I love how accurate it is, and it's a really great blaster. This one, when I upgraded it, uh, you can't really modify this, this hop-up in the same way because of how it's set up. It's not a uniform hop-up. It's mostly just, like, two pins that come down and hit the ball and then spin it backwards which you could probably sand them down but I don't know how reliably that would be you would have to sand them equally so that you don't have balls that are curving off to the left or the right uh, but in stock form it fires very straight and I like that with the spring that comes with it so honestly if you're looking for a blaster that you can use rival rounds you like the Kronos but you're not really pleased with it in stock form and you don't really like the loading mechanism and you want a couple extra shots I would recommend the Sentry because stock form, I really like it. None of the locks really get in the way. It holds seven plus one in the round really comfortably. Uh, the one thing I will say is from testing it, if you don't push the seventh round in all the way, you run into some issues. Whereas if you put in six, you're not gonna have any issues, but in order to put in seven, you really gotta make sure you push it all the way in past the feed lips. Otherwise you're gonna have some bad times. You're gonna have a bad time, all right? Uh, another thing that I don't really like about the Sentry is the ergonomics. The Kronos is an incredibly comfortable blaster. Everybody knows that and that's why a majority of people love the Kronos because this handle is just so buttery goodness. <laughs> Smooth as butter and it just fits in your hand really well. This one is a little bit too small for my hands and also it's not very rounded on the front. These are both very like squared off edges. So it's a little uncomfortable, and also just feels sharp in certain places around the edges. So rubbing your hand on it gets a little bit rough. And when I was priming this thing with an upgrade spring, it really didn't feel great. That's why I can't really mo recommend this thing if you want a modified blaster because the handle is really just that uncomfortable. I wouldn't really recommend it. I fired it for about 30 minutes with an upgrade spring, and I just really, my hand was just not enjoying it. The slide is all right. It has the sort of wing pieces that come out like on the Kronos so priming it was not an issue but it just the handle doesn't feel very comfortable and also the trigger pull is quite long. Uh, when I first gave this blaster to Tucker to try uh, he pulled the trigger and he was like it's not loaded it's not firing it's because the way this trigger works is you have to pull it back and it feels like you're getting to like a stopping point where it won't go any further but you have to push it down a little bit more 
in the middle of fire. And it's a little, there's relatively no resistance, but as soon as you get it to the catch, you feel it. It's kind of, it gets to be a tough trigger pull, but, but yeah, uh, this is my modified Chrono. So you guys have already seen that we've made videos about this thing. And I love this thing. It feeds great. It works really well in battle. So I love it. And that's why I was really intrigued about this because I was hoping that I could make a nice secondary out of this thing. But from my experience with upgrading it and modifying it, I didn't really get very straight shots as I would like. So I didn't really shoot as straight as I would like. Oh yeah, you're looking at my repair job. You fixed it. <laughs> yeah. I haven't told you guys, but recently I broke the slide on my chrono, so I just put another piece of acrylic and glued it on there with some epoxy putty and some epoxy and whatnot. Did both sides break or just one? Nope, just the one side broke. That's weird. Yeah, correct. That is very weird, but... Uh, yeah, this thing with the pull handle is really easy to prime and fire. The handle is super comfortable, shoots very straight like I said, and it's very easy to run in battle because all I do is I chamber around and then I take a magazine out and I can reload it. And I can even run multiple mags if I want. Whereas I like this thing because of its loading mechanism, but I just really don't like how the handle works and I have to take out the air restrictor. It just, this would make a really nice secondary, I feel, if the handle is just a bit better um, so in my review I do like this blaster a lot I think it's really great and I love this loading mechanism I just wish that the handle could be better I don't know may or may not do a handle replacement if I feel eager enough to do that because it's really comfortable and also I feel like this thing painted up would look really nice I would leave the orange and leave the gray I'll just paint this red how I would paint the handle black like my chronos and I feel this thing could be a really nice blaster like Holding as many rounds as it does and firing them is really nice. So for stock wars, I would actually love this thing. If going into stock war, I'd probably pick this up and be like, yeah, let's go. Like, <laughs> I'd rip that off. <laughs> That'd be the first thing I'd do if someone, if someone hands me this. It's like, oh, here you go. Just a uh, no mods war. Here, you can use this. I'd just be like, oh, sweet, thanks. Let's go. <laughs> just right in front of them just to like see their face. And I'd be like, ah, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It works without it. Uh, because that was a really great thing. That I was really intrigued about because when I got this thing I was looking at it and I was playing with it and this is fun and all it looks really nice with it on and whatnot but I don't really care about cosmetics that much I'm more about performance and being able to just load without having to fiddle with a door it's an amazing thing so I do like that I love that I can't stop talking about this loading mechanism because I just love it so much better than the stock chronos the door on, and you know, <laughs> you flip it off. It's just, like, ah! You're like, shit, that's, that's over there now. Uh, where's the stock door? Oh, there it is. Okay. But yeah, the, the Kronos made by Hasbro just feels so much better in the hand. Uh, they're relatively the same size and length and width and whatnot, but so they're both really great blasters. One is just really comfy, and as you, as you guys know, a lot of people modify these to do whatever they want. And so I'll say that, if you're going to modify one, Kronos has my offer of recommendation purely because of the handle. These are both really great blasters, but it's just coming down to basically ergonomics at this point. Like, I think they both look nice, they both fire well, they both can take upgrades really nicely, and if you want a rival pistol, I, I would say don't sleep on this, because like, if you like... If you don't mind how the handle feels and you think it feels good in your hand, I would totally recommend this thing. But it just doesn't feel comfortable for my hand and so I don't really like it that much. But it's just so comfy. I love blasters that you can load whilst having a dart loaded. I love internal magazines, that's why I love the Quick 16 and the Speed Load 6 and whatnot. Like, I really don't like how in order to load this I have to have the breech open. I would much rather prefer to have the safety of having a round loaded up and ready to fire and then being able to reload. But yeah, that's going to be it for the review of the Century for you guys. I'm not really going to do a shooting demo outside because it's relatively stock like. Oh yeah, pump and dump. So I run it home, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what a shame. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you're new. And if you like this sort of content. And we will check you guys out in the next one, alright? Bye. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Yeah. I, yeah 8 out of 10 feels good. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Solid B. Solid B. Like, B plus, honestly. 8.5. Mm -hmm. 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, 85%. Solid B performance. Yeah. Uh, this is like a 9.5. Uh, uh, probably.
probably gonna get the Chronos instead, especially since they're not on clearance. The price difference between them really isn't that much. But if you, really, if you don't want, if you want to stick to Hasbro, get the Century. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but. <laughs>